Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm going to be making orange cranberry soap and I did this last year. Loved it. it. Was a good seller. This fragrance behaves really good. Smells really good. All things really good. Um, Wholesale Supplies Plus, by the way, is where I got this. Uh, and it says it doesn't cause discoloration or acceleration and last year when I used it I found that to be true. So I am going to be making embeds with melt and pour. I have these little orange slice embed molds to of course be the orange represented and then I have this little dome or their balls little I think these were the small size balls from Wholesale Supplies Plus the molds so these will be sort of my cranberry ish even though they're bigger than a cranberry but I'm going to do the balls and the oranges to represent the orange and the cranberry okay are you with me <laughs> so sorry I confuse the issues sometimes but I think you get what I'm saying. Um, so for the colors, for the orange, I'm gonna be using Tangerine Mica from Be Scented because that looks juicy and orangey to me. And for the cranberry, I have Crimson Red Wine Mica. Crimson Red Wine Mica. And I thought that was beautiful. These two together, love it. So these will be the swirls in the body of the soap. I will do my melt and pour with these for the top of the soap. And let me show you what I did. I have my Workshop Heritage Molds this is the tall triple skinny mold from Workshop Heritage. This is what I use in most of my videos and I really enjoy these molds. Uh, I have found, okay, a couple of tips. Let's start with the first one. I made markers on my mold here so I know where to place my embeds um, along there. It helps me visually because I am uh, spatial dimension challenged or whatever. I don't eyeball straight lines very well. But these are very helpful. Um, so that is how I'm going to place my embed so that hopefully each bar will get a little cranberry ball and an orange slice. That's the goal. And the other tip on my workshop heritage molds is one time early on when I got my very first mold from them, the silicone kind of it you know stuck to the side and it was really hard to get it out and so I contacted them and they said you can do a couple things you can oil it or you can use powder and I actually sprinkle a little baby powder in there um if you ever see me unmolding soaps in my video and you see a white dust it's baby powder and it unmolds like a dream it just slips right out of the mold it keeps the silicone and the wood from getting any adhering because sometimes I put these away and they're still a little damp from getting washed and so anyway, that's my tip for unmolding silicone from wood is baby powder. <laughs> so that's it. All right, I'm talking a lot. That's the cranberry orange. I will do goat milk in oil method soap today. <laughs> so I need to go get those melt and pour embeds made and I'll bring you along as I pour those out and then wait till they firm up and then we can get going forward on making the soap. So let me get everything pulled together. Let's make some soap. All right, I've got my little cranberry and orange uh, embeds made. So I'm just gonna unmold a few for you. Um, I think they're so cute. I just poured these half full because that's all I need is a little dome, but isn't that beautiful? And I love that color. So, all right, here's my little cranberries or what's gonna represent the cranberries. And now let's get the orange here, my little slices. Oops. Behold. Oops. <laughs> There's a little orange slice. It has a little um, slices on one side, the other side's flat, but aren't those cute? So I'm just gonna get these all unmolded and then we'll, we'll get moving forward with the rest of the soap. I think these together are really cute. It's additives time, but first let me show you this lovely little plate of fruit embeds. Aren't those cute? They kind of make me happy. Um, I love them. Anyway, they're set off to the side for later, so let's get on to the additives. Here is my goat milk that I have water discounted from my lye solution. This is called the milk in oil method because I'm putting milk in the oil, right? <laughs> All right. And I am going to do my heavy cream powder today because why not? This is kind of a foodie soap and uh, I love it. So let's get it in there. All right, next is the colloidal oats. This is a two tablespoon scoop and kale and clay, a two tablespoon scoop. And that was two tablespoons of the cream powder also. 
all the good stuff. All right, let's get this blended up. All right, we're ready to get moving forward and it smells so juicy and good in the studio. I did put the fragrance in here because it is a well-behaving fragrance. So here's my lye bucket. It does have a tablespoon of cane sugar dissolved in it, toss of silk fibers and some sodium lactate. That's what's going on in there. And we'll get this in here, get them up to emulsion. I have my micas already dispersed in a little distilled water in the mixing pots. It just makes it a little smoother and easier on the mixing end. So we're ready to roll. <clears throat> and I would like to do a hanger swirl today if everything's, you know, behaving and looking good. That's the goal. <laughs> Pardon the froggy voice there. I had a little frog in my throat. Okay, so the beige, when it brazes up like that, that is the lye caramelizing or reacting with the milk and the cream, and that's totally normal, and it will bounce back. So I think it's kind of beautiful. Love color morphine, it's fascinating. Okay, guess what? I, I've already peeked in here. Um, there is a nightmare underneath the cover. And before I show you, before I reveal the nightmare, I had to remake some embeds. I'll t guess what happens to melt and pour embeds when your soap goes through gel phase with a bunch of other soaps? They melt. Okay, I'm gonna show you, ready? Ah, <laughs> it's absolutely hideous. So, a couple hours after I made a whole bunch of soaps and I have all my molds stacked and so that way it kind of has radiant heat and they are all going through gel phase. And I haven't done melt and pour tops in a while, um, little embeds, and 
I was upstairs doing some household stuff and I'm like, you know what, I need to go check. And I came down and it was just pooled. So I poured off all the melted embeds. It's absolutely atrocious. And I was so disappointed. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna throw away the footage and ditch this. And then I'm like, no, you know what? We can recover. And I'm a big no waste person. You know that about me. If you've watched any of my videos, I hate waste. We're gonna rescue this soap. And here's how we're gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this up into loaves and logs um, and then cut them into pieces and I will lop off the top and these will all go in my little shavings bucket. So this soap will not get wasted. Um, and then I am going to pipe. I have a little, sorry, off to the side. I have my piping bag with a little, just a swirly tip there. I am going to um, pipe on some frosting and put some new embeds on top of the individual bars. So we are gonna rescue this. This is, <laughs> it's funny. It's like one of those, you either laugh or cry. Well, let's laugh. We're gonna make something beautiful out of this super hot mess stew. That's just, oh my word. Okay, let's get in here and see how those swirls came out because you know, the inside, the body of this soap is wonderful. It smells fantastic. I'm hoping that hanger swirl comes out, you know, just lovely. And this is recoverable. That's one of the things with soap. If it goes wonky, you can rebatch it, you can shred it, you can top it with something new. So um, we're all about no waste, learning, moving on. Let's recover. All right, so that's hideous, but Let's get in here and see how the inside looks. All right, let's get in here and see how the swirls came out. And I think these are gonna be really fun to um, do the tops on. I think they're gonna come out really cute. Sometimes we get happy mistakes and you know, we just roll with it. So, let's start on this end here. Let's see if we have a fun little soapy pattern. I'm not even gonna show you the top. I'm just, you know, so nasty. Oh, look, it's a butterfly. These are gonna be so cute. So um, yeah, we'll lop off the tops and do the frosting. What I'm gonna do is I have, um, some soap on the to-do list today, and I will just make a little extra large batch and pour off a little of that soap to become the frosting for these. And then we will get on to that. Oh, I'm happy with the swirls. These are really pretty butterflies. So I think what I will probably do is go ahead and bevel these and stamp them before we get on into the tops in case, because sometimes when I frost the tops here, I'll show you, um, and put the embeds, it can sploosh out a little and get a little wider. Well, then it's kind of awkward to do the beveling and the stamping. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, yeah, we'll bevel and stamp, then we'll get to decorating the top. <laughs> and I, I bet when it's all said and done, these are gonna be absolutely fabulous and it'll be a happy mistake. That's what I'm hoping for. All right, so I'm back with my little single bar cutter to lop off the tops of these before we get to, um, uh, so what I do, okay, let me back up. I made these yesterday. They've been in the mold for about 24 hours. I unmold them, I cut them into bars and I let them sit. I'll go and do other things, cut other soaps into bars. I let these sit for a couple of hours before I come back in and bevel and stamp. That's how I do it. So I just cut these. I'm gonna lop off the tops and let them all sit there well, I go and take care of other things, get my other soap batch made um, and save off the top, and then we'll be ready to come in and finish these up. But first, I've got to get <laughs> these really hideous tops off. So just going to take off that, which is nasty. It's going to go in my soap shavings bucket here. Nothing's going to go to waste. That'll get rebatched. And now I have this funny little short bar that's gonna get really pretty topping. I think these are gonna be awesome when we get done. <laughs> so let me just go ahead and uh, lop off the heads of all of these. Feel like the queen of hearts, off with your head. That's nasty. All right, I'm gonna keep doing this.
All right, so I've been kind of fiddling around with how I want to do the tops. Um, and my piping is very runny right now, and that's okay because I'm not trying to get little um, dollops and peaks, I've decided. Since these take up almost the whole top of the soap, and I really want these to be the star, I'm literally just going to run some frosting along to use it like glue. <laughs> I don't want to pipe. The other reason why is I'm thinking about shipping these, and if I get too tall on the top, I don't normally do high top bars. They're awkward to ship. Um, very inconvenient to fit in a regular box. So I wanna keep the tops in a relative range. I'm not going for a super high top. Uh, this would be a great time though, if you love doing high tops, to let the frosting get really thick and just you know go all in there. But um, that's not what I'm doing today. So we're gonna go relatively low top just to glue on the embeds. So with that being said, I've got my sloopy frosting in the piping bag here. And I'll start in the middle so y'all can see better. And I'm just gonna sloop some out, a little stripey dipe. There we go. And I wanna put the little citrus side up. And let's grab one of these. So I think I'll do the orange facing that way and the cranberry like that. Just like that. looks cute and it's kind of slooping down the side whoops oh my gosh <laughs> oh my gosh that was a total fail all right blooper <laughs> 